everyone. Yes, I am excited to share this notebook series that me and a few other PhD students have been developing in Jeff's lab at Johns Hopkins University. So I'm a fourth year PhD student now, and I work on researching therapeutic antibody design via AI methods. But I remember when I first started at Hopkins, I actually didn't really know exactly what I wanted to do. I was pretty undecided with my research and what lab I wanted to join. And it wasn't until AlphaFold 2 was released and it really blew out of the water all previous methods at the protein structure prediction task that I realized like, okay, I really want to be in that field. And that's afterwards when I was in, introduced to Jeff Gray. And I remember when I was first starting to learn about how to use these different AI methods for protein design, there were a few challenges that I faced in the learning progress. And fast forward a few years, the field has grown exponentially in very, in very little time, but it's, it's interesting to see that new fields, even today are facing the same challenges that I feel like I faced those uh, few years ago. And, and those challenges include uh, a limit in accessibility. What I find is that a lot of these AI methods, especially the most novel ones, if you want to understand technically what's going on, you have to look in the very end of the paper at the supplementary section of these very technical manuscripts uh, that are often paywalled scientific papers. There's also a lack of guidance. There's by no means any requirement when a new AI model is released for there to be an accompanying tutorial on how to use that model. And so there's a big discrepancy in the amount of novel AI methods that are released and a tutorial that shows someone that's new in the field, how they can use that model. And then obviously with any big AI model that's going to be used, there's a lot of computational costs in the form of GPUs. And this is also by no means readily accessible to, to most people in the field as well. And so these challenges kind of motivated me to develop this notebook series that I believe addresses these challenges. It's a completely free and open source set of notebooks to teach a lot of these novel AI methods. We cover a, a broad spectrum of topics ranging from really the most theoretical basics, like different components of simple neural network architectures, all the way to more advanced topics, like how to use some of the more state-of-the-art methods in uh, AI for protein design. And I, I mentioned it's a uh, completely open source. Here's like a example snippet of one of the notebooks, more specifically, I've been saying notebooks, but more specifically, these are collaboratory notebooks provided from Google. Uh, the advantage of using collaboratory or uh, collab notebooks is that you can write and execute Python code completely from your browser. There's by no means any requirement for you to download Python packages, running these AI packages on your computer locally. So it's really simple in, in, in that sense. And then as well, Google provides a certain amount of GPUs that you can use for free. And obviously there's an upper limit in terms of how much GPU power you can use, but the notebooks are completely feasible to complete uh, within the GPU limit that you have for your Google account via Colab. And to make sure that we teach our material effectively for all concepts that we show, we, we make sure to present it in, in a variety of different formats. This is an example of one of our, sim of our more uh, simpler notebooks teaching about a very simple neural network architecture for a classification tasks, but we present it with descriptive text. We use animations, we label our figures, we provide the mathematical equations for some of the key operations involved in the neural network. And then obviously we also provide a Python to, to instantiate the model as well. And we wanted to make sure these models could all be, or rather these notebooks to all be run within a class time period. So to complete a notebook and understand what's going on takes on average only one to two hours. Okay. I kind of want to quickly run through a couple of the, of the pipelines that we present in the notebook series. So this first one, this fourth notebook is on language models for Shakespeare and protein. So what we do is we take a, a language model, very similar to chat GPT and architecture. And we train it on a data set of concatenated Shakespeare's plays, roughly 40,000 lines, data set wise size. And we train the model to be able to generate Shakespeare-like text. And I think this is a cool introduction to show students because they, for students that understand English, you know, where the model fails and where the model succeeds on a task like this. And then we make no modifications to the model, no modifications to the training at all. And we just substitute the data set to a, a data set of 40,000 protein sequences and train it the exact same way as the Shakespeare data set and show how the exact same model can learn about how to generate protein sequences from scratch. Uh, I also love this notebook because I think it kind of touches on like a philosophical idea of how 
you can think of protein sequences as, as being sentences themselves with their own grammar and their own syntax and their own semantics. So I think it's a really cool concept to teach students. Uh, those, the, that previous notebook was a little bit more on the simplistic side, but, uh, some of our other pipelines that we teach are a little bit more motivated by what we see at real pipelines in the real world research domain being used. So for this ninth notebook, we use a set of three different state of the art models for de uh, generating completely de novo proteins from scratch. So first we start with showing the students how to use RF diffusion to go from uh, what's called like a noisy or undefined protein structure and generate uh, a protein structure that has a more viable structure for, for a particular function. We then take that 3D structure and we use a second model called protein MPNN to place amino acids at each position of the structure that's appropriate for the structure generated by RF diffusion. And so now we have a, a new protein generated with a sequence and a structure, and we want to do a sanity check that these two both make sense together. So we take the generated sequence and we provide it into this third party model, obviously AlphaFold, and predict a, a structure from there. And we can compare the two different structures from RF diffusion or from AlphaFold to make sure that there's some agreement between the two. So that previous model that I mentioned was just RF diffusion, like a vanilla version of RF diffusion trained only on the canonical amino acids. But we also present a newer form of RF diffusion called the RF diffusion all atom which has been trained on a, a larger, vast array of biomolecules. It's been trained on canonical amino acids, non-canonical amino acids, metal ions, covalently bonded residues, and a couple other things as well, small molecules as well. So I think this notebook is kind of applicable. Like, let's say if there's a, a, a toxic molecule that you want to create a binder for, so you can neutralize it so that it no longer is able to interact with different molecular components within someone's body, for example, you could identify your, your toxic molecule. Uh, you can use RF diffusional atom, or we show them how to use RF diffusional atom to generate a protein to bind to that small molecule to hopefully be able to neutralize it and then identify what are the key interactions between the protein that you generated and your target that you identified. All this is done within the 10th notebook in Colab. So we released these at the time of the Nobel award celebration. And we were really happy to see that it did gain a lot of traction at the time of its release. And I think it's rightfully so, because I do believe that this notebook series increases the accessibility of how to teach and learn about a lot of these AI tools for protein design. And I'm also excited to see that it's ready for integration in the academic sphere as well. So we're you, this is the, this whole notebook series is the core teaching material for a course at Johns Hopkins University called Computational Protein Structure Prediction and Design. That's going to be starting in just two weeks from now. But at the same time, with this increased accessibility in these tools, I think what needs to be accompanied with it, obviously, is more comprehensive education on biosafety. So I'm excited to see how this community here and then also the community, the larger community tomorrow can talk about how we can connect these two streams of, you know, uh, AI accessibility and education and biosafety together. Thank you.